So we think we should, we should leave the customs union and that will enable us to sign new free trade deals. And I think free, free trade deals aren't a panacea in of themselves. We've heard quite a lot about them uh, over the last few months. But, but it's a good thing for business confidence to have trade deals. But we, we've done some, uh, some modelling on this and found that billions of pounds of uh, untraded potential um, are available to, to, uh, to be met and the UK could increase its exports very substantially. Uh, and some of this is with countries which are actually quite far away. Of course, as you say, uh, countries tend to trade more with countries which are closer to them, uh, but that's not necessarily entirely true. There's also other commonalities that, that are important, historical links, transport links, cultural links, rule of law, and so on. The other point to make is that the, the, our trade with the EU is particularly good on goods. It's not as good on services. And one of the problems about us trading into the EU is, first of all, there isn't a particularly good single market for services, but also that we don't share the same language with the rest of the EU. So actually, our services trade is, is to an extent hampered by the fact that we're overly focused on the EU to the extent of elsewhere in the world. Uh, Stephen Purvis, I saw you nodding uh, for much of that. And of course, we should concentrate on services because they are uh, the biggest aspect uh, of UK trade. Do you, where do you see the opportunities to do more business uh, for UK services? Well, firstly, at the, the highest level, I, I, I agree with Henry's point that uh, we, we may well be, be much better off uh, post-Brexit if, if this is handled correctly. And also that the, the proximity argument of trading with your nearest neighbours actually starts to be less relevant when you're trading in, in digital services and, and tertiary services rather than, than products. Uh, I think there are a few new lessons in, in global economics. So the latter half of the 18th century, the, the northeast of England per, per capita, GDP per capita, was the richest part not only of the UK but of the world. Uh, and actually, if you put it into today's terms, we had a GDP per head greater than Qatar. Now, stand fast recent events where we may well meet them on the way down. I, I think uh, there's lessons to be learned there. And that wasn't trade with Europe. That was trade with the, the, every single corner at the furthest extreme of the world. Uh, so leaving the customs union is key to enable the process of signing new trade deals. In the north, we have the, the GCC and the Arab Chamber of Commerce regularly visiting and making it very clear that they want to be at the front of the queue to sign a trade deal. And perhaps even do some pilot projects uh, regionally in the north uh, to make sure that they're, they're very much at the front of that queue. And that's absolutely what we think is, is the future, certainly for the north, not the northern powerhouse model of let's allow a buoyant southeast economy to prop up the north. No, let's allow the north to trade globally uh, and, and you know, actually rebalance that economy.